Welcome back. It is time for another post bag. Let's dive right in and start with this one. It's pretty obvious what it is, if it actually is what it says it is. I haven't opened a lot of posts lately, so my post opening skills may be a bit rusty. Or my knife is just blunt, that's also an option. Probably the latter, uh, this is really annoying me. Let's first change this blade. Alright, I can't find them, so blunt knife it is. Oh wait. It says TSC1, soldering tip shape 1C. C1, 1C, I think it's the same. Anyway, it's a TS100 soldering iron tip, and it is this tip. I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but it is a 0.1 millimeter tip with a, I don't know how to call this in English, a tangent tip. Maybe that's the right word for it. I have the 0.2 millimeter conical tip but that is sometimes a pain to use for soldering so I thought I would give this one a try. Next one the heat gun didn't quite do its job so that's why I'm holding my finger over my address. Now at first these seem like some beads for children to play with um, but actually let me get one out and focus in a bit. So the idea of these is that you solder this onto your PCB or in your PCB or through your PCB and then on the other side you have a little hook to which you can hook your oscilloscope to. And these were quite cheap. I think I have like a hundred of them. And I thought it would be a good idea to include these in some PCB designs to have something to easily hook my oscilloscope to. Next it says integrated circuits and it says 12 volts of something. Ah, I think I know what this is. Can I open this? No. This is a USB-C power delivery negotiation chip breakout board. That's a long sentence. Um, it uses the IP2721, if I can read this correctly. And this chip does the power negotiation from a USB-C power source. And this negotiates to, well I chose 12 volts, but there are multiple voltages available. Um, some of them use this chip. And I believe the voltage it negotiates is set by a resistor somewhere. And there's another chip that does another range of voltages. And I wanted to do some experimenting with USB-C as a power source and to get higher voltages than 5 volts you need one of these chips. Next one, it's quite heavy. Let's see. Oh, this knife is really annoying. These are some tweezers. Look at the packaging. You might think I bought a lollipop or something. These are some ceramic tweezers, or actually ceramic tip tweezers. Oh, it's coming out from the other side. So these are some ceramic tweezers. I have some different tweezers. I have these. And the problem with these is that, first of all, I drop them quite regularly. So the tips get a bit bent. 
this one's not so bad. And the other problem I have is that they kind of get magnetized sometimes and especially really small parts like 0402 resistors they just stick to the tips and there's nothing to do with it. So that's why I bought these. I have two types. I have the one with the bent tip and the one with the straight tip and I'll have to give these a try. Now they don't open, at least they, these don't open as much as the other ones do but they do have a nice feel to them. I made a deal with myself. This is the last time I'm buying tweezers from AliExpress. If I still don't like them I'll just cough up the money for some expensive tweezers. Next, no description. So both are capacitors. These are some through-hole electrolytics and these are 10 microfarad 16 volts I think it says and these are they look to be 0603 and these are also 10 microfarads actually is it farad or farads it's like 1 volt, 2 volt, 1 watt, 2 watt so I think it's just 1 farad, 2 farad right? I'm not really sure Next, I don't know if you can read that, I accidentally used the heat gun on the description, but I can read it, it says foam fix tool. And, well, uh, no, no, not a foam fix tool. These are some clean room wipers, I think they mean wipes, but whatever, clean room, clean room wipes. Usually when I clean flux of boards I use IPA and also when preparing to solder a board I clean them beforehand with some IPA and actually I've been using just some regular paper towel to do that but I find that sometimes that leaves some well paper residue on the board and I'm hoping, let's get one out, I'm hoping these ones don't. I saw these on Vodlog's channel. I'll uh, leave a link in the description below. And these seem like some pretty decent material and I hope they don't, well, what do you call it, shed? Well, it's not an animal but you know what I mean, that it, it leaves cloth everywhere. I hope these don't, so I'll give them a try and I'll give you my feedback. Next one. It is really difficult to get this into focus, but there is a number on there and it says 503939. Now these are some Hell Effect sensors. They are sold under quite some different brand names but they all have the number 3503 in common. Now this is for a project I discussed with someone on my discord server. I'll leave a link in the description below. And the idea was to somehow mount a magnet to the shaft of a stepper motor and do some encoding with a microcontroller and a Hall effect sensor to accurately count degrees the stepper motor has turned. And I've been waiting for this because I already have the magnets but I didn't have a Hall effect sensor. But now I do. So no more excuses. Next one it says diode. Now again this is also a Hall effect sensor and when you look these up on AliExpress they again have different brand names and also they have different markings. 
they're supposed to be the same. I bought some from a couple of sellers to compare them and see if there's a difference and if so what the difference is. And the last one already feels like there's some kind of cable in there so I have to be a bit careful. And it's a flexible DC barrel jack to XT60 connector cable and I bought this for my, let's see, will it open like this? Of course not. Oh, kinda. I bought this for my TS100 soldering iron. So it's really annoying that the cable that goes to the transformer it's upside down by the way, doesn't really matter, it's not about the display. This cable is pretty unflexible and because the soldering iron is quite light it doesn't work really well. And Brian Locke he found this cable on AliExpress, he tried it and it was a very flexible cable and oh wow yes that's really flexible and also quite light um, not only is this unflexible but because there's this thing on it and it's attached to a power supply it kind of drags a lot this one feels really light and actually really flexible don't know how well this will hold up if I do this too much but just a quick test this one feels really solid and this one really flexible but now I have just one problem see this doesn't plug into my power supply this one plugs into the soldering iron but I have no way of plugging this in to any power supply so I guess I need a flexi friend and these are today's post bag items thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it the links are in the description below as always and if you like leave a like if you want to comment please go ahead and I hope to see you next time bye bye